Now then, we're in the workshop and you remember that PK generator that we got working? Well, we're still working along on that project and of course it doesn't have a 24 volt DC output or a generator. So, I picked this up and basically it's a 24 volt battery charger. So that will work. So the generator starts up, it starts generating, this is plugged in permanently and it charges the batteries. But we don't know whether it works. And of course it's got all over it these weird security screws and it's, it's a sort of inverted torque but it's not six sided so you can't put a bi-hex socket on there which is typical and on the bottom there's a label going oh don't try and repair this send it back to the manufacturers so with a healthy disrespect for that I'm going to use the Dremel and cut some slots in those and then we can undo them so maybe you want to see that maybe you don't we'll just show you one with PPE and ear protection So there we go, I'll do the rest of them and I'll get back to you. Right, well you notice that there is no amp meter but we've got some uh, LEDs on the front. So if we wanted to, if this works, we could always remove all that nonsense and put a, um, an analog meter in place. Right, let's take the cover off. I've removed all the screws. Oh, right, good. It has got a beefy transformer. Right. Turn that round and let's have a look. That's looking good beefy transformer and just there focus there is some adjustment interesting yeah and that aluminium thing looks like the rectifier yeah so I think what I'm going to just do now is just take this downstairs and blow out all the muck with the airline. So I'll be back to you in a moment. Right, so that's the mains in, and this is the output, and we've got positive and negative, but we've got these other two wires here. That harks back to the video. I did with Lee about that um, electric chainsaw, that Qualcast electric chainsaw. So maybe this is a battery temperature monitoring circuit. We'll just see where that goes. Um, it's these whatever colour they are. Okay. Yes, they go down onto the circuit board. There's this little socket right down there. Can't, yeah. That white and red thing down there. So if we don't get anything out of this, 
then it may be that we'll just have to connect those two wires together so there'll be a sensor that when it gets hot it disconnects maybe there are a few little weird bits on this uh, set of circuitry this I'm assuming is a rectifier let's, zo let's move in a bit as you can see there we have a component on that aluminium block that's three legs so that's a transistor of some form and there's one the other side so that's obviously not the rectifier but just there that thing there there has got diodes behind it and it's got a central leg that goes through the circuit board so I'm assuming but it's only got two diodes there must be another two probably the other side of that uh, circuit board there's all sorts of stuff on here that is um, mm. but we've got those twiddlers there one says current that says current and that says first float so that's the float charge setting interesting right and there's another twiddler there which as you can see says RV4 C stroke C T A I P mmm right I think the only thing to do with this lot is to stick some volts in it and see what happens if it goes up in smoke it goes up in smoke but um, it was out the scrapyard so it's either surplus to requirements or it doesn't work and there's only one way to find out so let's crack on with that so what have we got from the negative there we've got a test lead that goes over now I know that that won't take full current but that doesn't matter it goes over to the negative there then the positive of that battery is linked to the negative of this battery and then the positive there is not yet connected So the first thing to do is just connect that. Can we see? Yes we can. Okay. So the rectifier at least. Okay, here we go. We've got a light on. And it says fully charged. Alright, okay. Good or not I'm not sure so we got this uh, this the remains of the power cable there and I've got a quick connect so let's just stand well back and connect that and see what happens oh we need to see what the battery voltage is first the combined battery voltage is that's the positive that is the negative 26.2 volts okay so now I'm just going to connect the, ma the mains supply let's just move things back a bit move that back a bit bring this round
that goes there this goes here okay oh it's buzzing and it says that it's charging excellent absolutely excellent and what is the battery voltage under charge 28 so it is charging and then it says fully charged so we need to put a load across those batteries and we need the amp clamp to see what's going on so I'll be back to you in a minute so I've just got some nichrome heater uh, wire there out of a storage heater and that is directly across the batteries so that's creating a load right let's just move over and now the charger is going we're charging grand So let's just see, we need to zoom out a bit. Well that's charging at 3.6 amps, which is good enough. And the load that we're putting on it is 3.4 amps. So let's increase the load by just moving this jump lead up the wire a bit so that shortened the wire so now we're on 5.2 amps drawing and what's going on It's not charging at hardly anything. 0.5. It's very strange. We're on DC. Ah. Let's zero that out. Right, we're on 5.5. .5, so it's keeping up with the load. Isn't that interesting? So I think we could quite happily just use this as it is. Put the top back on, having cleaned it up, and we don't need to connect those two uh, those two uh, wires. In fact, we can uh, unplug them probably from the um, from the circuit board. That way, there's no fuss and hassle with them. But it's working. We're happy. And of course, um, let's just check the battery voltage again. Coming round here. It's still got the load on it. That resistance load. And we've still got 28 volts. Drawing 5 amps but putting slightly more than 5 amps in from the charger. Brilliant. And just to say that was in the scrap, so save from the scrap, fully working, so it seems. Um, and it's um, it's uh, semi-intelligent, I suppose. Well, something's going on anyway. And when we've got this 24 volt pack here, I'm going to play around with that, which is a 24 volt UPS. Uh, backup battery pack come inverter charger thing and if you take the batteries out and bring some leads out from the battery where the battery compartment was most of the time you can use these as an inverter so I'm going to do a video about that 
but as for this comments please yeah love your comments always like to have a few comments interesting ideas and what have you but hopefully you understand that I've just used a bit of resistance wire to create a load on this battery pack to make the uh, the charger work as it were catch up with you soon cheers for now